So we're done with uh, entity and ball and paddle and player and AI. All we have to do is finish up the play state and the game will be basically done. So first of all, we're going to just have a thing in the handle input. My input dot is pressed. My input dot escape. Uh, gsm dot set state gsm dot title just for the hell of it we're gonna make our dispose method empty because we have nothing to dispose of and yeah so when you hit escape it just goes through the title screen so score that's all we have to do so this is gonna be a very short video so private int left score Oh, and drawing the center. Right score. So left score and right score is going to be 0. So left score is equal to 0. And right score is equal to 0. Alright. So now we're going to do score check. So private void score check. I'm going to turn on the volume because I'm going to run it in a second. I'm going to do if b.getx is less than or equal to negative 50. Because it's only in that one frame, it's negative less than 50, so it has to be after update. Right score plus plus. So if it went to the left side of the screen, that means that the. Uh, that the uh, right that the left player missed it and the right person scored and same with the other side so I'm just gonna go ahead and do this it's gonna be very similar uh, very similar to the uh, bouncing logic with plus 50 left score plus plus all right so, uh, so I'm just going to do score check up there. So before I get started on the drawing score method, just know with a string and a bitmap font, uh, the origin is at the top. So I'm going to do a little, little thing on strings. So let's say we have the letters that are about to be on the screen once paint.net opens up. Say we have the following letters H and Y with a really big font size bigger bigger H and Y lowercase y though let's have a nice red line no alright whatever we're gonna have a nice black line then it's gonna go from here to here strings have boundaries so from here to here from here to up here this is the height so from so this line going down, that's the height of the string. All right. The this line going across, that's the width of the string. And then this line going down is the descent of the string. The descent is a negative number. So if you want to add the descent to the height of the string, you must subtract it. So it's plus so that it's a minus minus so that your entire height will then be this line on the left. All right, this is just important to know. And the origin, instead of being at the bottom left, it's at the top right. So that square is at the origin. All right, that's just important to know. So we're gonna do a private void draw score. And to draw 
to draw a string in a bitmap font, you use the sprite batch. So private void draw score. So we're going to give it the sprite batch. SB. I'm just putting this in a separate method to make it neater. So we're going to do string right left. All right, it's temporary strings. Left equals blank plus left score. This just tells the computer to make sure that it's a string. This is a nice way to make things string. Just putting plus blank right score. So float. All right. This is how I do it. Left x, comma, left y, left width, left height, right x, right y, right width, right height. All right, so first we have to find the, the width and the height. So LW equals game dot res dot get font. We're going to be using our main font, main dot get bounds. We're going to give it a string. So left dot width and LW 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 L height is game dot res dot get font main dot get bounds left dot width minus game dot res dot get font dot dot get descent get font main so let me pull up the play state on here so that you can see that method that line all the way across dot get descent width and height so yeah as you can probably see already or as you saw the the right width and the right height it's just the same code but with right here because they're different strings because they're having they have different scores so change everything to r and right all right so we're going to determine the x so the x lx the center of the x is going the center of the string is going to be at a fourth of the screen so it's game game dot uh game dot size dot x times point 25f because it's at one fourth minus lw times point 0.5f now uh as you may think ly will just be uh, plus or also minus uh, the height time times 25 f as is as it was with the paddle but since its origin is at the top right we have to do it uh, plus so we're gonna make both of them at the same y position so they're both gonna their y is both of their y positions are gonna be centered at uh, three fourths of the height of the screen so plus LH times 0.5F and then we're gonna do RX so this is gonna be at three quarters of the screen of the screen's width so it's gonna be 0.75F minus RW times 0.5F RY equals game dot size dot X or dot Y in parentheses this is quantity times point seventy five plus our height times point five f. Why is there an error? Oh, f. Don't forget that f. Game dot res dot get font and then to draw a font 
it has a built-in method so main dot draw you have to give it a sprite batch the string to draw so which is going to be left for us and then we're going to use left x and left y to draw it and then we're going to do the same thing with right so game dot res dot get font main dot draw is going to be using the sprite batch that we give it and the string for the right score and at the position of the right score so and again we have to do sb.begin so sb.begin sb.set projection matrix just like the last time so that it's uh, that the score is drawn in the right position even when we resize uh, draw score sprite batch and sb dot end so as you can see now there will be a score counter in our game see he just scored on me And now it's resized, now it's taking out the whole screen and the frame rate went down. As you can see the the they stayed relative to the screen. So uh yeah. So close. So now we're gonna draw the center line. Cause as you as you remember from Pong Pong from 1972. Uh, I'm gonna wait for that to. As you can see, there's this uh, there's this little line of squares going down the center. So I want to keep that. I want to draw that in the game as well, in our game. So it's gonna have a private void draw center it's going to take in a shape render sr and we're going to use a for loop to do this I'm just going to go ahead and call this before we draw everything so everything's on top of the center because it does this in order so the b is on top of the draw center this will be make a difference when drawing when making like a side scroller so we're going to do integer number of rectangles number of rects. The number of rectangles is an integer so we have to cast it that to this. So it's game game dot size dot y over 10 because they're going to be 10 tall. So we want it to be for every 10. No they're going to be 5 tall but there's going to be a, a space of uh, 10 in between each one. I'm going to do 4 int i is equal to 0. i is less than gain, or number of rectangles i plus plus. So sr dot rect. So game game dot center dot x minus 5 because the width is going to be 10 so they're all going to be centered at the center. So i times 10 so if it's 0 it's um, if i is 0 the first one it's going to start at 0 when it's 1 it's going to start at 10 when it's 2 it's going to start at 20 it's pretty much a simple function i and 5 the width is 10 and the height is 5 so we will get our center line be drawn right there and if we resize the center line also gets resized because the game dot size gets resized uh, I don't know why it's glitching out anyway so that's that our play state is done you have just successfully made Pong. Congratulations! 
Now we're just gonna make a title screen. Our title screen's gonna be very primitive looking and very ugly. Well, that's because Pong didn't even have a title screen, so I'm just throwing this in so that people have somewhere to go when they first start the game. So our next, uh, our next uh, video will be the last one. We're gonna make the title screen, add finishing touches. So make the, we're gonna go into our desktop launcher and we're gonna mess with some stuff in there. And then we are going to uh, export it into a jar file. And I will show you how to do that. So yeah, see you later, bye.